Uh, hello everyone, my name is Zafar Kazi. I am an assistant professor at LAMS Pakistan. And this is a joint work uh, with my faculty colleague, Ehsan, and a group of fantastic undergraduate students at LAMS, Iman, Saad, Haris. So let me begin by sketching uh, the broader motivation for why we're looking into this problem. So popular video streaming services like YouTube, TikTok, you know, are the most popular services on the internet. And um, if you look at most of the views on these platforms are coming from mobile devices. And these popular video streaming platforms attract a large number of global marketers who use these platforms for advertisements. And this is good for the platform providers and for the advertisers. However, there is a cost that is paid by the users. And this cost is not just in terms of their time and personal information, but it is also in terms of the data cost that they pay, which can translate into direct financial costs. And this matters for many users in the global south, for many users in the developing world, because affordable internet access continues to be a major challenge in the developing world. Um, just to hit home this point, uh, there was a study done by World Bank across 11 emerging countries. And one of the insights that they had was that 48% of the respondents had difficulty paying for their mobile data plan. And um, the UN Broadband Commission uh, found out that 98% of the countries, 98 countries, sorry, do not meet the affordability targets that are set by the UN, which these affordability targets are that the price of the mobile broadband should be less than 2% of the average income in that country. And 98 per countries do not meet that target. So in this study, given this larger context, our goal was to look at the data costs that are associated with watching video ads on YouTube. And the way that we went about doing this study was, the methodology was that we picked first a convenient sample of eight countries, four developing and four developed countries. And these countries are among the top 20 countries in terms of YouTube audience size. And then, we looked at two types of videos. Trending videos, these are the most popular videos on YouTube. And then to compare and contrast, we also looked at non-trending videos that were available on the YouTube homepage. To emulate users accessing YouTube from different countries, we used a VPN service, commercial VPN service, to access uh, from that specific country. In total, we had a video data set of more than 17,000 videos and more than 46,000 video ads. And before I get into some of the key specific findings, I just want to share a key takeaway, a high level takeaway, which was that we discovered that there were multiple hidden costs that were associated with watching ads on YouTube. And that resulted in a substantial amount of data being consumed by ads. So on average, the data consumed by ads, even when the ads were skipped, was 13.2%. So you're watching a video, there's a main video, and there are ads. On average, the ads were consuming 13.2% of the data. So to begin, we looked at the proportion of data that was consumed by ads. And we were just focusing on the amount of data that is associated just with the ad and not taking into account any hidden losses. And we discovered that the video ad ads account for an average of 28% of video bytes if you watch the video entirely and 3.9% if the ads are skipped. And that's understandable. You know, with YouTube allows you to skip ads after five seconds. And we did this analysis. But when we zoomed in, so we zoomed in and we looked at the video buffer states, which was looking at how much of the video data was actually buffered as well. And we discovered multiple surprising insights. So number one, we looked at are ads really skipped? 
So when you press the skip button at five seconds, what's happening under the hood? And what we discovered was that in most cases, 80 to 100 percent of the skippable part of the ad was already downloaded. And so there was aggressive prefetching of ads that was going on. And again, this has a direct uh, consequence for users in the developing countries. Number two, another surprising insight that we found was that we noticed that our main video chunks that were buffered were getting re-downloaded when mid-roll ads would appear. So these are ads that appear in the middle of the video. And um, we saw that there was a substantial amount of video that was getting lost. So in developing regions, we observed that 4.2% 4, 4, 4 of the main videos lost due to mid-roll ads. Uh, and in developed regions, we saw that 5.8% of the main video was lost. And we also observed that a mid-roll ad results in the unnecessary re-downloading of as much as 71 seconds of main video on average. So a lot of your main video is getting lost when mid-roll ads were appearing. Now taking these into account, the cumulative ad account was 13.2%. And this amounts to 4x increase in the amount of data downloaded because of ads. So if you discount these excessive losses, this would decrease the ad count by 4x. So how do these ads, these ad costs impact affordability? Well, we observed that nearly 7% of the two gigabyte data plan, if you have, is consumed by just these excessive video buffer losses. And so you could avoid, uh, if you could avoid these excessive buffer losses, this would result in 38 minutes of more video streaming time every month. So just summing these insights up, uh, what we observed was that there is a significant amount of data wastage due to skippable ads. They're appearing. Uh, there is, and there is also data being wasted because of the mid-roll ads. And the main video is getting re-downloaded. And there are multiple interventions that can be introduced by the video platform providers as well as policymakers. So number one, for instance, the obvious ones are that the uh, platform providers could employ a less aggressive prefetching of video content. Uh, they could update the client-side media player to avoid mid-roll ad-related losses. For instance, you could imagine uh, separate buffers for both main video and ad content, so you don't have to lose the main video content. More broadly, I think there needs to be a multi-stakeholder discussion about how we can protect the most vulnerable users in developing countries from facing these additional costs. And so for instance, there can be policy interventions where we limit the amount of ad data that can be associated with a video, okay, um, and so on. Uh, so with this, I would just wrap up our, the talk, uh, the code, the data set, Scripts are available on this link, and uh, I would be happy to take questions.